Well, good morning, brothers and sisters, saints, friends, Brother Mike back on the podcast. The deep things of God, Brother Mike. Thanks for tuning in every Sunday morning at nine o'clock Mountain Time. That would be uh, eight o'clock on the West Coast. And that would be uh, 11 o'clock on the East Coast. Thanks for tuning in today. Uh, I'm going to discuss uh, one of the most important things in the world to your life. And it is the incredible virgin birth of Christ. I, I'm not much of a Christmas celebrator. You know, I don't really celebrate it, but I don't condemn other people that do celebrate it. But I do celebrate the virgin birth of Christ because that applies to every single one of us. And none of us could have been saved had it not been for the virgin birth of Christ. It's utterly amazing how important that is. <clears throat> If you need to get a hold of me and send me an email, mike at hardcorechristianity.com. Remember, we have two uh, live Zoom deliverance services every week, Tuesday and Wednesday nights at 6 o'clock Mountain Time. We also have two live services at the Deliverance Center in Phoenix. Uh, those are 7 o'clock on Thursdays and Fridays. We will be having them this week, too, Christmas week. And so, uh, no problemo, 7 p.m. Mountain Time. I hope you bring somebody that needs to be healed or delivered from spirits. We are grateful for the anointing at the Deliverance Center and on the Zoom services, and very grateful for all the people that get healed and delivered from demons on those services. Remember, uh, we do deliverance, in, deliverance completely different than they do on YouTube or some other place in that uh, deliverance has to be a repentance-based system. And if it's not a repentance-based system, uh, you're just simply going to cast a bunch of demons out of somebody, and then they're going to get reinfected later. It happens all the time. It's routine. So if you go out and start casting demons out of the homeless, and you don't have a system set up where they are to go, go through mind renewal and repentance of sin and change their lifestyles, the demons are just going to get back in. It's, it's that simple. If you look at Matthew 12 and Matthew uh, Luke 11, you're going to see something shocking. When the demons come back, they bring reinforcements. And the person is sicker than they were before you cast the demons out of them. Always remember, you can tell a legitimate deliverance ministry by what they teach. And if the teachings are repentance-based and mind renewal, that's probably a legitimate deliverance ministry. If they don't, it's probably a demonic fraud and a deliverance ministry run by familiar spirits. Let's take a great look at God's word today, shall we? Well, it is fantastic, isn't it? Here, I'll read it to you real quickly. It says in Matthew chapter one, right? Matthew one and Luke one, we get this unbelievable story of the virgin birth of Christ. And uh, if you go to Matthew one, verse 20, Joseph has just realized that his wife is pregnant <clears throat> and she never had sex with anybody. And of course, Joseph doesn't believe that for, for obvious reasons. I wouldn't have believed it either. And she, Mary had told him the story of the visitation of the angel. And, uh, you know, he was struggling with that too. Well, the angel of the Lord appeared to him one night in a dream, and he said to him, Joseph, son of David, fear not to take to you Mary, your wife, that which is conceived in her is of the Holy Ghost, and she shall bring forth a son, and you shall call his name Jesus. The Greek word is Jesus. Uh, the Hebrew word is uh, Yahshua or Yeshua. I'm not exactly sure how they pronounce that in Hebrew. And the angel said, he shall save his people from their sins. Greek word sozo means deliver. And it says, uh, now all this was done that it might be fulfilled that which was spoken of by the Lord through the prophet saying, behold, a virgin shall conceive. A virgin shall be with child and she shall bring forth a son and they shall call his name Emmanuel. In Hebrew, El, of course, is God, which means God is with us. God is among us in Hebrew. Okay? Now, this Greek word parthenos is the word for virgin, 
and it means a sexual virgin. That means that if you know someone or know of someone who is um, claiming that this was all spiritual and it was um, theoretical, something of that nature, that is 100% false doctrine. For Mary was a sexual virgin. All right, the Hebrew word in that verse uh, is Alma, and Alma means uh, young maiden, a young maiden. And the implication of the word is Alma. They were a sexual virgin. <clears throat> and it's used four times in the Old Testament, Alma, to describe someone who would be considered a sexual virgin. And yes, Mary was very young. She was probably. 13, 14, 15, something like that. I'm guessing. Obviously, I don't know. And so uh, in Matthew 125, it says, He knew her not until he had brought forth, she had brought forth her firstborn son and called his name Jesus, Jesus in Greek. Now it says here, her firstborn son, and the Greek word there is prototokos. And a prototokos means first in a line of others. Okay. That means that she had Jesus first and then had other children later, Prototokos. <clears throat> and of course, we know that the Bible specifically says that Jesus had four brothers and an unknown number of sisters. But technically, they were half brothers and half sisters. Why was that? Well, we'll get to that in just a second. And this is why it relates to you and I. What good does the virgin birth 2,000 years ago have to do with me? <laughs> well, that's a legitimate question. Let's flip over to Luke chapter one. It says, the, the uh, angel came to uh, Mary. Her name in the Greek text is Maria or Miriam. <coughs> Excuse me. I've had a little bit of a cold lately. Um, well, I don't know what her name was technically. Uh, so I'll just call her by one of the translations of the text, Maria. And it says, uh, verse Luke chapter 127, to a virgin espoused to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David. The virgin's name was, again, same Greek word, Parthenos, sexual virgin, was Maria. The angel came into her and said, Hail, you that are highly favored. The Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women. Yeah, putting it mildly. And then it says, the angel said, quote, fear not, Mary, Maria, you have found favor with God. Behold, you shall conceive in your womb and bring forth a son and call his name Jesus. He shall be great and he shall be called the son of the highest. The Lord God shall give him the throne of his father, David. He will reign over the house of Jacob forever and of his kingdom. There shall be no end. What a statement. And then Luke uh, 1, verse 35, Mary's confused by this. Uh, Maria says to him, I don't know. I've never had intercourse. How does this work? And the angel said, quote, the Holy Ghost shall come upon you and the power of the highest shall overshadow you. And the holy thing which shall be born of you shall be called the Son of God. For with God, nothing shall be impossible. And, Mar and Maria responded with, behold, the handmaid of the Lord, be it to me according to your word. And then the angel left her. Wow, what a story. And why in the world is this story so absolutely necessary? And why is it so important to you? Well, if you go back however many years it was, five, six, seven thousand years, um, Adam and Eve were standing in the Garden of Eden and the devil came to him in the form of a snake. And he hijacked a snake, or he uh, supernaturally created what some appeared to be a snake. However, that happened, I don't, I don't know. I don't really care. But it says that uh, Paul later explained that Eve was deceived. The snake was telling her things, spiritual things about God and about herself, and she was deceived. The Bible says, but uh, Paul explained in Romans that uh, Adam was not deceived. And Adam was the one who was at fault 
for the fall of man because Eve got fooled. She thought what she was doing was right and it was okay and it was good. She was just tricked. But the Bible says that Adam wasn't tricked. And so what happened from that day forward is every person born after that was born in sin. And the sin gene enters the womb at the point of conception when the sperm and the egg unite. You are a human being at that moment conceived in a, in a womb, so to speak. And at that moment, the sin gene is transferred into the person. And it comes from the father, not the mother. Adam, not Eve. The sin gene comes from Adam, not Eve. So that every human being is born in sin. And every human being has the sin gene. The sin gene is the gene of death. The sin gene causes you to live in sin. It generates your fallen nature and it causes you to enjoy the pleasures of sin. Every person is born in sin because of Adam's failure and how he screwed up six or 7,000 years ago, whenever it was, when that incident occurred in the Garden of Eden. He lost everything for us. He lost everything for humanity. And he stole everything from God. You got to remember that uh, in the beginning, when God created all the angels and they were all created first, all the angels uh, are supernatural beings and they were all living in heaven with God. And Jehovah uh, saw a rebellion where Satan had peeled off a bunch of the angels. We don't know how many, but it was a significant number, huge. And that those angels, uh, to use a, to use a religious term, backslid. They turned their back on Jehovah and they went with Satan. Lucifer, I guess his name was at the time. We now know him by Satan, that's for sure. Uh, what a nightmare he is. But God never allowed to himself to create a redemption program for angels. Once they sinned and they were lost, he let them go permanently and there is no hope for their redemption. No plan of redemption was ever created for angels, they're done. But the same thing happened with Adam. The devil stole the angels, then he stole the humans. <clears throat> he ripped the Lord off twice. But this time, something different happened. God, uh, with his pity on our lives and knowing that we are made of just dust and we're not like angels supernatural beings who have all this knowledge, all this power, and they see all these things in the heavenlies. Human beings did not have that. God did not give uh, Adam a fraction of what he gave Lucifer when Lucifer was created. He dumped the whole blessing wagon on Lucifer and he betrayed him. Well, he didn't do that the second time. He created man and he gave him an incredible amount, but nothing like he gave Lucifer when he was created. And so um, Adam stole our lives and damned every person to death because of the sin gene. Every human being is born in sin and the sin gene comes down from Adam through your generations on the male side and your dad had the gene and gave it to you at the point of conception Nine months later, you were born in sin. Why is this virgin birth so important? Because God set up a plan of redemption for human beings. He did not set up for angels. And that plan of redemption was spectacular. It was a plan that would wipe out sin and permanently wipe out the sin gene. And the result of that gene, death. 
And in order to do that, somebody had to pay for the sin of humanity. God just can't overlook something or let it go or pretend it doesn't exist or go, I don't want to think about that. No, he doesn't do that. He can't do that. Doesn't have the ability. He has to have justice. And in order to do that, God needed a someone to pay for your sin. And that person had to be sinless. And the person that did it could not be born in sin. And the story of the virgin birth contains our salvation, our eternal life. We escaped the judgment of God and the damnation of hell because God found a perfect savior. The Lord Jesus was not born in sin. He did not have the sin gene from Adam because Joseph was not his father. Jehovah or Yahweh was his father. There was no sperm involved in the conception of Christ. That's why the angel explained that she would become pregnant. That which happened to you was of the Holy Ghost. And so the humanity of Christ is contained in Mary's egg. And the divinity of Christ is contained in the conceptional power of the Holy Ghost. And Joseph had nothing to do with it. The rest of his children, four boys and an unknown number of girls, they were all born in sin because they had Joseph's sperm. Mary did not have Joseph's sperm, and Jesus was born without the sin gene. He was not born in sin. Then a bigger miracle occurred. He lived a sinless life. He lived a sinless life. Imagine that. I can't imagine it. I have no idea what that means, but that is a miracle that somebody ought to be shouting from a housetop. Can you believe somebody kept the law and lived a sinless life? And only one person ever did it. So you can see on the cross of Calvary, can't you, where God had the perfect sacrifice for our sins. And Jesus paid the price for our sins and took the punishment for our sin and our peace. And the Bible says he didn't just carry our sins to Calvary. It says he became a curse for us and he became our sin. And that sacrifice caused the Holy Spirit and Jehovah to leave him on the cross after he he had loaded up the sins of humanity upon Jesus. His body was butchered and essentially destroyed. He was tortured. And the purpose of that was to pay the punishment for our sins. He paid the punishment for it. And it couldn't have happened had he been born in sin. And it couldn't have happened had he ever sinned. Because then he wouldn't have been our perfect sacrifice. And because of that, God provided a way of redemption for man that he did not provide for angels. Yeah. And because of that, you are entitled to, in Ephesians chapter 1, I hope you'll read it today. It's spectacular. All of the blessings of God are yes and amen in Christ. And the only thing that keeps you from getting the blessings of God and anything you want is you. It's your free will. Because the Lord Jesus provided for us all the blessings of God are yea and amen in Christ. For in Christ are all the treasures of wisdom 
and knowledge. Paul said he preached the unsearchable riches of Christ. <laughs> what was he talking about? Well, <laughs> he was talking about everything. And everything is yours. Ephesians chapter 1. You were made part of the family of God. You were chosen before you were born to be saved. God hunted you down and shared the gospel with you. The Greek word for gospel is euangelion. It means glorious good news. And what God was telling you is that, listen, my son was not born in sin. My son did not live in sin. My son completed and fulfilled the law, Moses' law. And now I'm replacing that old system because of my son with the law of faith. The law of Moses was replaced by the law of faith. And your faith can get you any miracle from God you can believe for. Every person gets different miracles from God because every person believes at a different level and at a different rate. It's that simple. But each person who is a born-again Christian, Ephesians chapter 1, you are part of the family of God. You've been grafted in. You are on the true vine. You have all the blessings of God in Christ. They're all yours. And the only thing that triggers them is your faith. Because you live now, not under the law of God, not under the law of Moses. You live under the law of faith. And now that you've been washed in the blood of Jesus, the perfect sinless blood of Jesus, never born in sin, never committed a sin, the blood is priceless, the blood is perfect, the blood is sinless. Once you're washed in that blood, God does not judge you in eternity for your sins. You will never see the great white throne judgment. That's for sinners and unsaved people and backsliding apostates and those type of people. They all end up at the judge at the uh, Great white throne judgment. You are not going there. You are not going there. You will end up at the judgment seat of Christ. Yes, your life, your Christian life will be completely evaluated. Yeah, some of the things are going to be bad and some of the things are going to be good. Yep, it's called being a human. Guilty. Uh, I got stuff that I wish wasn't going to the judgment seat of Christ. Yeah, it's just sickening. And I got stuff that, you know, I'm grateful are going to the judgment seat of Christ. What am I like? Every other Christian, I'm the same. There's nothing special about me. Guilty. I'm a human being. That's it. But I've been washed in the blood, and that separates me from the sinners. That separates you from the world. You are a special person in Christ, and you are that way because of the incredible blood of Jesus and the miraculous, supernatural, virgin birth of Christ. Okay? There's a bunch of phony doctrines out there saying that uh, Mary wasn't a sexual virgin and that it wasn't actually a miracle. Well, that's the stuff you expect the devil to come up with. I mean, he can read. He's got the whole New Testament memorized backwards and forward and hates every verse in it. So he'll make something up like that. It's total insanity. She was a Parthenos, a sexual virgin. The birth of Christ was supernatural. It was miraculous. And remember, it wasn't like the supernatural births of John the Baptist or Isaac. Okay, those were supernatural human births. And those two people, when they were born, were born in sin. Jesus's birth, unlike any other birth, was not like that because there was no sperm involved in his birth. It was not a miraculous human birth. At the Deliverance Center, we've had about a half a dozen women over the years who have come in to pray for barrenness, and uh, they were healed, and they got pregnant. But those are not virgin births. Those are miraculous human births, like John the Baptist, like Isaac. This birth is the one that bought you your ticket to eternity. This is the birth that gain, you gain access to all the blessings of God based on your level of faith. Okay? And faith comes by hearing, you're hearing by the word of God. Anything and everything is possible and within your reach because 
God provided a salvation plan for humans. He did not provide one for angels. All those angels that bagged him, there's no hope of redemption, and they all burn in hell in the lake of fire, along with all the other human beings they led to continue to sin and die in their sins. But Jesus, when he died, did not die in his sins because he was sinless. He was your sacrifice and became your sin and became your curse, Galatians 3. And now you are a product of the virgin birth of Christ. <laughs> Can you imagine uh, us getting saved? I mean, I look at myself, I can't even believe it. I should have been farmed out and dumped into a trash can and then hauled off to the gates of hell years ago. But you know what? Something knocked on my door. There it is. Yeah, I opened the door. You know what it was? Mercy. Mercy. Mercy got me. And I found out how it happened. I went back and read Matthew chapter 1 and Luke chapter 1. And I found out. I'm a product of a virgin birth of Christ that occurred about 2,000 years ago, thereabouts. And it is alive today. It's alive today. And you know what? You can't lose. You cannot lose. See, now as a born-again Christian, you don't sin because you are scared you're going to go to hell. You sin because... you. If you sin now, it gives demons access to you to destroy you based on the law of sowing and reaping. Okay? God is not judging you for your sins. You're judging yourself and Satan is judging you. Second Timothy chapter three. Satan will judge you for your sin and he will send demons through your open doors of sin to destroy your body, your mind, your finances, your family, your friends and everything you see falling apart. It's all falling apart because you or someone close to you, somebody is sinning. But because of the blood of Christ and the virgin birth of Christ, God is not judging you for your sin. He already judged you at Calvary. You've already been judged. And since you put your faith in the blood of Christ and the Son of God, you are now the righteousness of God in Christ. But if you choose to sin as a born-again Christian, you are opening the door to demons and they will torture you. They will ruin your marriage, kill your kids, steal your finances, rot your health right through to the grave if you don't stop and you don't repent. It is, but it is not God doing it. It's the law of sowing and reaping. And that law applies to sinners, it applies to saints. Everyone is under the law of sowing and reaping. So my recommendation would probably be today, take advantage of these incredible blessings in Christ. Take advantage of the fact that you're not being judged by God for your sin. Take advantage of the fact that all the promises of God in Christ are for you. Yes and amen. Take advantage of it. Because God provided it for you. He gave it to you because God's a good God. God is love. And he wants you to be happy. He wants you to be healed. He wants you to be delivered. And he's accomplished it all through the virgin birth of Christ. <laughs>